What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I am Ron Daniel. You are here for another five things, top five, Friday five, whatever you want to call it. This video is for you if your budget ain't budgeted. This video is for you if you are finding yourself in a not so good financial position right now. Speaking from experience myself, I think I've got five things that we shouldn't do with our money. If you feel like you need some help with your finances, this is probably going to be a good video for you. So I suggest you watch until the end. Let's go. I wanted to make this video because I am a very transparent person. And unfortunately, I have made some really bad decisions recently when it comes to my finances. And I found myself in a little bit of a bind. Thank the Lord, I am fortunate enough that it's not impactful to my shelter, my security, and like everything is taken care of, but it could be better. Going through my bank account, I was able to see things that I just did not need. I had so many purchases that, was, that I was like, you know you could have paid that card off, <laughs> you know, with these certain things that you bought. And it was like, I was going down this cycle, accumulating more and more debt, not really coming out of it, doing just making bad decisions financially. My channel, if you watch it, I'm on a life path of better mental health, emotional health, physical health, things like that. I feel like the next thing in line has to be finances. I need my financial health to be at the same level of execution that I'm that I have in those other areas. So I need to get better. I think this video is pretty helpful. I did have to go down and just take a look at my behaviors, my habits, the actions, the things that I was doing that was causing me to be not so financially stable as I like to be. I've come up with five things that I think will really help you guys as well as myself. I'm actually in the process of doing these things now and I just think they're really helpful because they were areas or things that I've done that kind of got me in this position. That's you, don't be ashamed, we can get out of it. That's the one thing about a tunnel, right? It's always got an end, unless it's a cave. But there's always an out, <laughs> there's always an out in that tunnel. What I wanna talk about now are the five things not to do with your money. So number one, first thing I have here is to never lose track of your money. That is something that I did. It was a big mistake. I haven't looked at a paycheck stub of mine in the last year. How I know I get paid is by an alert from my bank that tells me there's been a deposit. By that time, there's usually things that are auto taken out. So I don't necessarily know what I actually make. But that was a big problem. I think that's something that you should always keep track of. You should always know what you have coming in and what you have going out. So it's really important to never lose track of your money. Never lose track of your spending. After going through my bank account, I was able to see that, wow, I literally spent $350 on body moisturizer. Here it is. I have a credit card that has a balance due. And it's like, you know, you could have made a better choice. Because I was losing track of those things, I wasn't able to see it. It wasn't in my face. So number one thing is don't lose track of your money. Number two, don't buy things, don't buy stuff just because you can. I'll tell you, I recently was promoted over a year ago and my income changed significantly. And a lot of things opened up to me where I was able to purchase things that I didn't necessarily need, but because I wanted it, I got it. <laughs> I was looking into like addiction, right? Like shopping addiction. And a lot of the times, one of the symptoms is, or one of the caveats of that a type of addiction is that the high or the endorphin rush comes from searching for the product, locating the product, buying it, and if you're ordering online, receiving that package, and if you're buying it in the store, it's getting that pack, getting that item in your hand and taking it, you know, taking it home. What I noticed was, after reassessing everything, I realized where my endorphin rush was coming from, and it was adding it to cart, purchasing, waiting on it to come, getting the package, opening it up. That is where my happiness came from. Definitely love the items. I do use most of them, but a lot of it, it, it went like I would get the package, I would see the item, I would play with the item, I would, you know, <laughs> and then put it to the side. And next thing you know, I'm back on Amazon or whatever website looking for the next thing, looking for the next thing to purchase. Or I'm in Home Goods or I'm in Target and looking for just that next thing to purchase. And it wasn't necessarily the items 
that I liked. It was the process. Buying a lot of things just because I can. That's something that you should not do, right? Most of the time it's a waste of money. Like if you be honest with yourself, like I have a lot of my things up, I like to touch them and oh, I love that. But when I think about the value that it adds, it's a visual stimulant for me. And as a tourist, if you believe in that kind of stuff, I am attracted to nice things, beauty, and you know, my environment is really important to me. So in that aspect, I do get something from it. But logically, realistically, thinking of financial security and thinking of financial stability, it wasn't the best decision. And a lot of times you just don't use it. I have a $300 camera thing in there that I just don't use. It is, I've used it maybe twice. Uh, so you just waste a lot of money when you um, just buy things because you can. So that's number two. Number three is going to be <laughs> pretty simple. You've heard this. Everybody knows this. Don't just pay the minimum. Again, losing track of my money and my what's coming in and coming out. I was just doing the bare minimum for everything. And then it was like, Okay, let's pay it again and pay it again. But I'm not really seeing a decrease, right? Because interest is coming in and taking up those minimum payments. So what I would suggest, and this is, again, something that everybody probably has heard when it comes to finance is pay more than the minimum. Try to pay $15 to $20 more than your minimum. That way you can start to see a real impact on that balance decreasing, especially in terms of credit cards. Uh, depending on your APR, whatever that is, you know, you're definitely going to see some ups and downs, but do more than the bare minimum. <laughs> and again, this is something that I want to take it back to number one. This is something that I would have caught on to had I been paying attention to what's coming in, what's going out, and where we are in terms of debt. Right. And number four is, this is <laughs> something that I don't know if it's conditioning, but the number four is don't spend all your money at once. I am notorious for seeing that direct deposit on Friday and by Monday, I've got just enough to get me to two weeks. And I get a nice, I have a decent amount of pay. And the fact that I can run through it that fast, yes, bills are being paid and, you know, those things are being done. But the surplus of that should be enough that I can still have all of that paid and leave money left over by the time my next check comes it is just whatever that amount is and that's sad to say um so try not to spend all your money right away you get ahead of your bills then they more than likely won't be past due and they won't be in a dire need of being being paid try to save as much of it as you can until you get your next check that way you might save something to carry over into that next check um, I do just want to make something really clear um, is that although this financial situation is very burdensome, uh, again, I am very blessed that I do have everything taken care of as far as my shelter, my home, my physical food, everything like that is definitely taken care of as well as savings. Like I do have savings accounts. I have money that comes directly out of my paycheck that goes into a savings account. I've got 401k and things like that. So there is some type of security in the back running, but I can do a lot more with what I have in front of me. So again, just uh, make sure that you're not spending all that money right away and you are kind of holding off. Like if that bill ain't due or if that item that you need, let's wait. Let's wait until next week to get it. You know, don't spend everything at once. I honestly think that is a part of like conditioning. When you grew up the way that I grew up where everything was to the penny and you didn't have anything and when you got something, you had to spend it because you never had anything. I think my conditioning is still set up that way that I have this mentality of, what if I'm not here tomorrow and the money's just left there? I have this fear of not being able to get what I want because I may not be here the next day. But that's a very limiting, limiting way, limiting, 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 limiting way to um, think because when do you plan for that future self? When do you take care of that future self? I, honestly, I just think it's conditioning. I think it comes from upbringing, religion, tells you to just live for the day and don't worry about tomorrow, you know, thinking about all that kind of stuff. I think it definitely plays a part in thinking of, let me spend it while I have it and don't worry about saving. And then number five is never shop 
when you are emotional. Part of this we may know, right? Like shopping when you're sad and when you're angry, those kind of things we get, right? Like we've heard that, that's not a good practice. However, what I'm talking about is definitely that, but in addition to that, I'm also referring to when you're happy. When it's Friday, when I'm ready to turn up, I'm going to Target on Saturday morning. I love this day. Even those happy emotions. In those moments, your brain and your body's going to start to think, oh, to keep this going, to fuel this feeling, we need to go buy something. Let's go get something. So try to avoid shopping in an emotional state, whether it be in good or bad. If you're feeling good that day, feel good. Go walk, go to the lake, um, go, you know, you don't, it doesn't always have to be associated with a purchase. And I think that's where I dropped the ball is that everything was associated with a purchase. If I was having a bad day, first thing I do is scroll on Amazon. Um, if I was having a good day, y'all know I love Saturday, a sunny Saturday, and I love to go to walk through Target and, and I don't need anything, but I love to do it and I love to get little things and it just is not a good practice. Can you do it? Yes, but I think when you do it excessively, that's when you end up in the situation that we're in and that I'm personally in is that it becomes a part of that feeling and you just don't really get to enjoy it. This video was really just talking about things not to do. I'm not going to go into what you should do because I'm a believer in practice what you preach. And I am just now practicing these things, but I know these were things that I shouldn't have done, which got me in the position. So I'm going to practice these things. I've got a few other tips that I'm doing to help me get back on track financially. And once I have that all down and I feel good about it, I am definitely going to share that information with you guys. That's our top fives. Just to run them down again is first off, never lose track of your money. Number two, don't buy things just because you can. Number three, don't just pay the minimum. <laughs> number four, don't spend all your money at once. And number five, don't shop or spend when in an emotional state. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get something out of it. I hope you can take some of these things and remove them from your life so that you can put yourself in a better financial situation. Again, I'm Ron Daniel. Uh, these videos, the top five videos, are uploaded every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Follow my channel, please. I do have uh, follow and subscribe. I do have other videos aside from this. I like to do weekly vlogs. A lot of times I'm doing just pretty much everything that is involved around motivation and inspiration. So if you like that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. For those that are subscribed, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you. I'm going to put some videos here for you guys to watch. And again, I will see you in the next video. Bye.